Hello, welcome to another Draw with Edgar. This is number three. We have festivals and celebrations in this one. Mostly the festival, or carnival, as most of the requesters have asked for. I'm also trying something new this time. I'm going to be talking about what the... I'm going to be talking about whatever the person who got the piece wants me to talk about. Uh, this first piece is convenient, though, because they asked me to talk about anything. So I'm going to welcome you to the video if you're new to watching my videos. I'm going to welcome you to my channel. Uh, it's been reworked a little bit. I'm going to be doing a lot more Let's Draws than really anything else. And what I do is I offer free art to anybody, really. I set up a free raffle once a week that has a theme, and anybody can join and have their characters drawn in a situation befitting the theme. Anything they ask for that is within the theme. Uh, it is a raffle that I host on Fur Affinity. Now, you don't have to be a furry to join, but it helps. I have drawn human characters a number of times. It's just I enjoy drawing humanoid characters with animal features more. Or ponies. I draw ponies now and then. Well, I used to be exclusively ponies, but that was quite some time ago, in a life far gone. Now, this first image, the request was that they wanted to have their character on a merry-go-round. Or, not a merry-go-round. That's entirely different. A Ferris wheel! <laughs> anyway, uh, they didn't say much else other than riding on a Ferris wheel, so... I thought, well, what happens on a Ferris wheel? Oh yes, rejection. So, here we have uh, one of my characters, Warp Fang, over on the right, trying to make a few smooth moves and get fresh, and their character, who is a monster goat, uh, rejecting him quite outright. Now, I've received two requests for monster goats so far, and I don't know where they came from. All I know is that they are apparently a thing. I have a regular goat, but she is not a monster. No, she is a regular goat character. But it's, you know, it's okay. You can request any kind of character. Regular goat, monster goat, it really doesn't make that much of a difference to me. Now, as I was saying, you don't have to be a furry to enter these... raffles. Of course it helps, because they are hosted on Fur Affinity. You don't have to be a fur to join. In fact, it's free. Free to anybody. And there's a lot of non-furry art on there. In fact, I see a lot of anime art for characters that are certainly not furry. A lot of... Well, I used to see a lot of DBZ art, actually. And the canonical characters, not furries that are pretending to be Saiyans. Which, you know, a Saiyan is an entirely different species that's uh, technically, like, monkey people, kind of, so... You know, to then make a furry of a monkey person? I don't know. Although, one could argue that we are anthropomorphic apes. So, there is that. But, you know, about, uh, you know, evolution. Let me get to what I'm doing here. Now, uh, my coloring method is a uh, fairly... You know, what I do is I block everything out with a gray background, uh, because most characters that I encounter are either bright colors or really dark or really light. Not many of them are uh, gray or in between, 
So this gray background actually helps me with painting the colors over. And I keep the lines red for a while. And the reason I do that is so that I can more easily see when I go over the lines or when I um, make color mistakes. I don't know why, the red lines help me a lot more than when they're black, so I always make them black after the fact. Uh, so, as you can see, we have a character that's mostly pretty white, and so the gray actually helped me pull that together. In fact, the picture is almost done. Check that out. He failed at his attempts for love tonight. Maybe another night. Maybe another character. Maybe somebody will want Warp Fang someday, but not today. Certainly not after that, of course, but uh, that's beside the point. Now, the second picture was requested by Bewildered Cougar, and he wants me to talk about superheroes. What got me into superheroes? Uh, what I like about them? And, I mean, it's not hard to see that, you know, superheroes, they're awesome, right? Uh, when I was a kid, I I had some comics that you probably wouldn't normally give a kid. I mean, I had, like, Spawn comics, and I had some very gory, bloody comics, but I don't actually think the comic books are what got me into superheroes. In fact, I think it might have been anime that got me into superheroes, which... Seems a little backwards, but I think maybe anime got me into cartoons, which then got me into superheroes. So I got there in a bit of a roundabout manner, you could say. Uh, either way, I got to them because I I really do enjoy the superpower sort of thing. Uh, you know, you have supernatural abilities that allow you to take care of situations in a much easier fashion. Now, if I had superpowers for a long time, I just thought, oh, manipulation of lightning would be great. I actually really enjoy lightning, storm, electricity, that sort of thing. As a tabletop gamer, I always look for the lightning spells, which not that hard to find, fortunately. Uh, when I play other sorts of games, like superhero games, I go for the electrical attacks. In fact, the only MMORPG that I was ever able to stick with for any length of time was City of Heroes. Rest, or, yeah. It's unfortunate what happened to City Here City of Heroes. I mean, I enjoyed it for a really long time. Actually, the the first thing that I got into in City of Heroes was not actually City of Heroes. It was City of Villains. When that came out, I almost immediately got it and started trying it out. Unfortunately, at the time I got it, which was when it came out, uh, my computer couldn't actually handle the City of Villains experience, so I had to get a new graphics card just to play it. And once I finally did, it blew my mind, you could say. I did a lot of role-playing in it. I actually would role-play when people weren't even role-playing around me. It was uh, crazy. Like, I would go into battle, I'd actually be shouting things as if I was the character, uh, just calling the enemy names, things like that. And yeah, the enemy is AI, and the only people who are actually listening are the other people on my team, but that's good enough for me. Well, that's because I've been a long-time role player. I think we covered that before in a different video, though. Uh, some of my favorite characters were actually based off of old role-playing characters of mine. 
Not my favorite characters from uh, City of Heroes. In fact, the main, the only City of Heroes character that made it to level 50, because I'm so bad at alting. I have what people would call altitis. I mean, I filled up the available slots for heroes all the time. Nor villains. The characters. That's it. No, they called them tunes. People called them tunes, which was neat. Um, I always had all the slots filled up, and I had like an interdimensional deity. I had a chaos god's avatar. I had uh, undead. I had Caitlyn Chaos. You know, one of my characters. Uh, who is an undead feline character, and she had, like, energy powers, chaos enhanced. And, of course, I had a lot of rat characters, because they, they had the ability to give them, like, rat ears and a tail, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so I actually had, uh, Warp Fang in City of Heroes when I finally played the actual Heroes side, and I had a few other uh, rat characters. I think the only one that, uh, oh, Gearclaw. Yeah, that's actually his origin. Uh, I made him in City of Heroes, or City of Villains, Gearclaw, the master robotics mastermind, and although I didn't really enjoy Mastermind class that much, because it was boring, uh, he, as a character, really developed and took off. So that's actually where he comes from, for the most part. It's not like I'm saying, oh, he lives in that universe, because really, they don't have that universe anymore, do they? Since... The game's not there anymore. Although, uh, City of Titans, is that still under development? Because I know they had a, uh, uh, Kickstarter, and I don't know what happened to it after that. I think I'll have to look that up at some point. And there's, there was something for a while that I signed into now and then that was City of Heroes, but it just let you hang out around the main city. And it didn't let you use any powers, but you were able to do the costume editor and talk to people. I guess reconnect with your old flames from City of Heroes, but it didn't really offer that much excitement. Because for me, for an MMORPG to actually hold my interest, it needs to, uh, number one, not be boring. Which is honestly why I can't play uh, what is it? World of Warcraft. I tried. I actually did. I gave it a fair chance three different times, you know, on its trial period. Uh, you know, I when it was free, I, or I guess it is still free to low-level characters, and, you know, I try, tried it as up to level 10 or something like that, uh, after the expansion and stuff was out. I don't entirely remember everything about it, because it was so damn boring, <laughs> I can't remember much of it. Um, some people would tell me that the only way that you would enjoy World of Warcraft was actually if you had friends to play with or like a community that was with you. And I'm thinking, well, that'll help you enjoy anything. You know, I wasn't interested by the actual game, the mechanics. It, it was slow. It was boring. <laughs> like, there was nothing really going on for my character. So, I gave it a chance, and it just didn't work out for me. Whereas City of Heroes, I mean, by level 2, you're able to fling exploding fireballs, and 
destroy hordes of minions that are shooting uh, their assault rifles at you. Which is great. I enjoyed that immensely. And City or World of Warcraft just couldn't compare because almost all of what I was doing in World of Warcraft was walking or grinding. You know, just like walking around, walking around, doing very little. Oh, I've gotten off topic. I've stopped talking about superheroes and I'm talking more about MMORPGs. Well, that is a shame since superheroes are definitely more worth the uh, conversation, I believe. Now, I am working on my own comic. I think I mentioned that last video as well. The character on the left in this image is one of my characters from that comic. Her name, or her superhero name, is just Stone. Uh, she has the ability to manipulate rock and stone, anything with a high density uh, or is dense enough, it's something about chemical compound, blah blah blah. I had an explanation, I don't remember it at the moment. But basically she's in a superhero team that's called the Elementals, which has stone, storm, flame, and frost. Although to be fair, Storm doesn't really have all the powers of the storm, she just has electricity abilities. She can envelop her, yeah, envelop her body in lightning, travel at super speeds, and she can conduct electricity. So she's more like lightning than storm, but it's sort of like a FFSS, you know, flame frost, storm stone. The names, they just match up. And Flame and Frost are actually the ones that I've drawn more often than the other two. Uh, mostly because you know, Flame has that really stylish hairstyle and she's uh, sort of gothy. And Frost's, Frost has big boobies and you know, as a character she's actually very vain. So that works out for her. But as a comic, it's not really focused around the elementals. The comic, which is currently called The Losing Streak, still working on it. But it is about super villains more than superheroes. Yeah. Anyway, on to the next picture. This. Uh, what? How can I not remember the requester's name? You know what? For the next video. I'm going to copy-paste all the names down so that I don't forget them while I'm talking about them on the video. Anyway, he wanted two of his characters at the carnival enjoying cotton candy and ice cream, which, <laughs> those are delicious. I mean, who can fault him for that? Cotton candy? Ice cream? Heck yeah! And one of them's a dinosaur or turtle thing? I'm not sure. Oh, his name is Koopa! something koopa 13 i i know i'm close but i'm not like right there anyway he wants me to talk about ice cream and why it's so damn delicious now i'm not a uh, ice cream aficionado but i do know that it happens to taste very very delicious in fact almost every night me and my girlfriend enjoy a nice dish of ice cream. Almost every night. Uh, currently, I am enjoying the flavor from Friendly's, known as S'mores. It's a limited time, uh, but I'm enjoying that because they stopped producing their limited time uh, Purple Potamus, which sounds funny, but is friggin' delicious. It is. Purple Potamus, if, if you have the chance to buy that in your area, do it. It's good. Oh, I love it. And the s'mores, that is a very good flavor. Um, you know, usually me and my girlfriend, we buy different flavors. But lately, 
we've both just been getting s'mores because it's just that good. So, you know, no hate on the s'mores. In fact, I'm, I eat them up. And honestly, you should too. Because s'mores are delicious. Friendlies, please sponsor me. Anyway, uh, you didn't hear that. No, I didn't even say that. I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Ice cream. And I used to have a... Ooh, what's it called? It was an ice cream place. Brewster's, that's it. I used to live near Brewster's. And my ex would ask me to go out for ice cream at the weirdest times. You know, 8 p.m. Uh, in the middle of fall. But Brewster's is open until 10 and almost year round. So that's okay. But I really enjoyed their milkshakes because they'll do any flavor you want of milkshake. Like if they have the flavor on the menu and they rotate their menu all the time, then you can get it as a milkshake. And that's awesome. Like, absolutely delicious. Uh, the problem is, some of them, I think, add a little too much milk to the shake. But that could just be a personal preference. I really like thick milkshakes. And milkshakes are ice cream, so I can talk about them. Heck, I can talk about milkshakes anyway. You're not the boss of me, so there. Uh, but I enjoy milkshakes quite a bit. Uh, there was this one time. That it has nothing to do with milkshakes. We're back to ice cream now. Anyway, uh, we got a chocolate fudge ice cream, and it was very good. So I got it again. But this time, apparently, the packaging was wrong uh, because the packages actually look very similar. Uh, but I bought it from Friendlies again. But instead of chocolate fudge, it was some kind of coffee ice cream. Uh, which had, like, a similar package style, but was not the same contents. And, honestly, I can't stand the taste of coffee. So, I I gave it off to my girlfriend. She likes coffee. So, it didn't go to waste. It just, it was a bit of a disappointment for me. And I was without ice cream for a little while. Because I didn't have any backups. So, yeah. I had to go to Giant the next day. That's right. That's where I get most of my ice cream. Giant. Because they have sales all the time about one flavor or another. So it's very yummy. Very, very yummy. And, of course, Giant is not expensive or anything. Which I like. You know, very easy to get the kind of food we need. Of course, when I go to Giant, I also pick up meats and other things because i make my own food oh cooking is actually a subject that i'll touch on on a later uh picture because it has been requested that i talk about cooking during the maypole picture so we'll get to that in a bit you'll get to find out all about my previous experience as a hibachi chef so uh here I put the characters in sort of more normalized clothes. Uh, they were wearing sort of ninja outfits, but the one had a scarf, so I translated that over. And the other one, I got like a DBZ vibe from, so I put uh, the big uh, pointy Z on his shirt. You know, so it's like, yeah, Z move. <laughs> Kamehameha. Aha. No, that sort of thing. So I got pretty much. I'm I'm actually quite happy with this picture. The uh, the references I was provided they were actually a lot uh, clearer than they appear. Cause I mean they the colors <clears throat> were appropriately placed. You know, there's no shading. And that's one thing I gotta talk about at some point, is references, because sometimes the references, not that great. Especially when people save them as JPEGs. Never save a reference as a JPEG. 
Never. Never. Because when you save it as a JPEG, it has... It creates artifacts all over the place. So, whenever I go to, you know, dropper a color from your reference, I may end up getting a much different color just because of the artifacts. So, you know, be careful of that. Don't don't go for JPEGs, kids. There's nothing good about them. You know, except when the picture is huge, which is probably why they're okay for cameras. Hey, the picture's done. Check that out. Cotton candy and ice cream. Um, num num. Okay, this one I was trying to show myself while I was uh, drawing, just to see if it would work. The device that I was using, OBS, kept complaining that. It was running out of memory, which, you know, I, apparently it was lying because the video looked fine to me, but it freaked me out a bit, so I restarted it without showing me, you know. So here we go. This is from, shoot, I can't remember the name again. I'm going to have to write down a list for the next time. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I can't remember at the moment. But, basically, they wanted to be hitting that hammer. And, wow, I'm really going pretty fast with this picture. Look at that. I'm already into the redlining phase. That doesn't... Oh, wait, that's because that's in the background. I still have to uh, refine him a bit, I think. So I'm probably going to be going back to the blue lines. Am I? Maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, he asked me to talk about carnival games, which actually I don't know that much about. I was saying carnival games and how they're rigged. You know, I hate when games are rigged because it just it's like, hey, look, here's a game of skill. But in fact, your skill doesn't matter at all. We just want your money, which... That's just a dick move. I mean, I can understand it when it's gambling, because that's a little more high stakes. Like, you, the money really is more about it, and the thrill is more about actually playing the game. But at carnival games, the prizes are so cheap, I don't understand what the point of rigging them really would be. Because, honestly, it's like, oh, I give you my money, and then I lose. And then I lose. It's it's not efficient in my mind. You know, you could have a kid that's going, give me the thingy. But you could spend less and just pick it up at, like, a regular store, in fact. So, really, there's no point to rigged games, especially at a carnival. Like I said, though, slot machines and such, everybody expects those to be rigged. Because they really want the money, and the games really are all about money. So they don't want to let you win. But then again, that's right, slot machines aren't really about skill. See, these games are supposed to be about skill, and the other games are not about skill at all. And if a game is about skill, you shouldn't shouldn't rig it, because, you know, you're supposed to give people a chance. It's kind of like video games that are actually impossible, like they have a difficulty that says it's just really hard, but it actually can't be beaten that way. And that's just not right. See, there are some games that I really enjoy their high-level hard modes because it presents such a challenge, but if the game is actually impossible because of the difficulty, it doesn't make it any fun at all. Uh, but, you know, that's just, that's video games, really. And when they rig a video game, I just call that poor programming, really. 
Some of my favorite games to play on really hard difficulties uh, happen to be Baldus Story and Endless Legend. Yeah, Endless Legend. I play that on Endless Difficulty just because it's uh, actually challenging to me then. Uh, otherwise, it's just very easy. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done with this picture. Check that out. I, yeah, look at that. That one went very quick. Like, probably the quickest one I've done in quite some time. Boom, there we go. So, let's see, what's up next? Oh yeah, and this one I tried again uh, since I had a look at the last video with its uh, little me in the corner while you're looking at the drawing. And in this, you can really see how I only really draw one-handed. I don't even reach for the keyboard for Control z or anything. I actually use the pen to tap the button up in the corner. It, it just feels more natural to me not to have something else on my other hand, because usually when I'm drawing normally, you know, with the sketchbook, my other hand is holding down or moving the sketchbook itself, because, you know, it's a lot more stable that way. Um, so sometimes in a little picture, you'll see me just sort of stretch my arm out or maybe scratch my face because I had some terrible itches that day. Because, you know, of course I would when I'm recording, right? So, the Requestor, which this is probably my favorite piece that won this week. Uh, just because the person requesting it included two of their friends. And I love that. Love that feeling. You guys should all include your friends with your requests. <laughs> hint, hint. Anyway. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes. So, they asked me to talk about themes, I think. They were unsure of what to ask about, really, because this was something that I just started. So, I'm going to talk about themes. And when I started doing the free sketches at the beginning of February, I didn't have themes, but only for the first two weeks, I think, because I really enjoyed it. I figured I would continue, and we would start doing uh, more things to get people interactive, like give people ideas of what sort of things they'd like to have in their free sketches. Because a lot of people, they just didn't know what they want. And sometimes people still don't know what they want. Uh, I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm just saying some of you just don't know what you want. So, the first actual theme that we did uh, still is one of my favorite themes. Uh, so I do try to bring it back now and then. But you guys don't vote it up. As friendship. Uh, friendship, basically, like I was talking about with this picture, actually. In friendship, a person had to make a request that also included a character of one of their friends, and then the request would be something they were doing together. And that was a fun one. Uh, we had a guy jousting on his pony friend. We had some friends that were pointing out clouds in the sky, and we had a guy that was playing a video game on his friend's face. You know, things like that. And uh, then the next theme, we had cosplay, which got pretty well voted, but was not actually one of my favorites. Uh, we got somebody who wanted Attack on Titan, just sort of standing there, which was one of the reasons that I started saying, hey, with the requests, you guys got to be doing something, not just standing there, because I am a lot better at drawing 
pictures with actions or things going on, dynamics, you know, that sort of thing, than I am with just plain standing there. And standing there is boring. I mean, why do you want a picture just standing there, right? Sure, it's a good image of your, or a good clean shot of your character, but these aren't reference pictures. These are sketches. These are things that you want to show off, right? Maybe. I mean, they're not really well uh, refined because there's no shading or anything. I kind of use the same thickness of lines, so there's no line weight really either. But, um, you know, if you want better images, you gotta pay out your money. Anyway, uh, then we did a theme of magic. That was a pretty good one. We did a theme of villainy. <laughs> that was fun because we got uh, tigers for everyone. And we got assassinations. And then we got slice of life, which was okay. We got Vikings, which, here's the thing, Vikings was, in my mind, sort of a uh, epic request sort of thing. Come on, bring me the goods. And then I got people who were standing there with a shield and a weapon. It's like, yeah, dressed like this, posing. Why are you just posing? Why aren't you chopping someone's head off, you know? So I got two really good images out of that couple posers. <laughs> no, three really good images. That's right. And then we had horror, which had zombies. Uh, horror is actually, it's come around again. This time is spooky horror, which is a different kind of sketch style. So in the next video, you're going to see some different lines, <laughs> some different spookiness. And then we had Easter, had tabletop games, and then we had mobsters, which that one we got some good requests in, and then we got going out, and we had fight night, but unfortunately fight night was about the time that I got a bit burned out, so that was then. Now the themes really, they just come to me off the top of my head, usually when I'm writing the themes journal. I mean, if there are specific themes that you guys want to see, you come to my journal and you talk about them. You don't just uh, hope they come up. You know, if there's something you want to see, come tell me. Because if it's a good idea, and I love it, I'm going to start uh, asking for votes on it. See if everybody else loves it. You know what I mean? And if we got enough people that are interested, boom. Your idea is then a theme, and everybody's in on it, and it's going to be fun, a lot of fun, right? I have fun with this. I don't know about you guys. I mean, you get your characters drawn for free, and, you know, I get practice, I guess. I don't feel like I've gotten that much better since I've begun, but, you know, that's beside the point. <sighs> oh, yeah, I kept trying to replicate the uh, same... Uh, Ferris wheel in the background, but I think I messed up with where the boxcars are on that one. And here's the last one. This is the Maypole. And I tried a worm's eye view on this one because I still have to practice with that. So, we have Lyra here. Now, this person, if I don't remember their name, I'm in trouble, because this is my girlfriend. Uh, she, she's not an automatic win, you guys. I actually have to roll uh, her number in order for her to win, and she knows that. But, like I tell everybody, you know, enter, even if you've already won, even if, well, yeah, even if you've already won. You just come, and you enter. So, it would be unfair of me to not let her join. You know, she's a sexy dragon, so I mean, why wouldn't I want her to join? But, anyway, she wants me to talk about cooking, which I am an expert on the subject. <clears throat> yes. See, I used to be a hibachi chef. Yeah. I'm a white guy who used to be a hibachi chef? That's right. Well, I had training for it. And 
I had training at the restaurant that I was going to be a hibachi chef at. Basically, they had me as a hibachi kitchen chef for a while, which, you know, I could cook the food and I didn't have to worry about doing all the tricks in front of people. And basically, I got skills in making fried rice and making steak hibachi and shrimp hibachi, chicken, lobster. Uh, what was the other one? It was oysters? Uh, scallops. Scallops. Why would I say oysters? Oh my god. No, scallop hibachi. And I got a lot of Japanese style cooking skills from working at Tokyo Diner. And it was a lot of fun, actually. I had been working at Tokyo Diner for probably about three years before they let me into the kitchen. Uh, I actually started as a busboy, and then after a while, I turned into a host, and then after a while, I became assistant manager, and then I left my job there for a while because I was working for the state, and they had really good, uh, yeah, it was good pay and good benefits, so I just stuck with the state for a little while, but unfortunately... The governor wanted to get rid of a lot of state jobs, so I stopped working there because I was terminated. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So I went back to working at Tokyo Diner, and they put me in the kitchen because that's what they needed at the time, and they didn't feel like... They needed me as an assistant manager anymore, which I thought was a bit of a mistake because the place had really gone a bit downhill since I left. Uh, the customer service was actually their weakest point, which you wouldn't think that, but it was because they'd really bring, they'd put huge preference towards return customers. They wouldn't make new customers feel that well. Or feel that great about being there. And it really made the business itself suffer. But I'm sure they're still open for business. It's just, you know. Anyway, cooking. I cook most nights. We don't go out that often. Um, I was said I'd talk about meat in the freezer. And basically what we do is when we go to Giant or BJ's or wherever we're doing our shopping, we get a bunch of meat, you know, beef, chicken, steak, which is kind of beef, uh, ham. We'll get these and you know, have them in the freezer for whenever I have a meal idea. Because we don't buy like a little bit at a time. We're getting like five chicken breasts. Because it's a lot easier that way. Because I will cook chicken, steak, beef, whatever each night. I'll do chicken fried rice. I'll do, well, it's more like chicken hibachi fried rice. Anyway, I'll do like the pasta sort of chicken pasta where you know, it's got a really nice cream sauce to it and the Flavors, they just mesh. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. Oh, mm. um, num, num. Anyway, uh, we'll do chicken pasta. I'll do just like roasted chicken breast. Uh, I'll, I can do many different things with chicken. I, <laughs> you don't even know until you've tried it. I can cook, and that's not just me being arrogant or cocky I can cook uh, even my ex I would cook just about every meal for her in fact she'd get me up at like 10 30 at night because she's hungry again and wants you know, broccoli and mushrooms yeah yeah and that's what I had to do with my nights because you know I didn't need to sleep or anything because who sleeps you know, all I had was a job. She didn't have any. Uh, anyway, enough about her. I don't need to talk about her while I'm drawing this. Anyway, uh, I can 
cook just about anything I put my mind to. I've done meat pies, which are really delicious. You know, I'll do uh, ground beef with like mashed potatoes and onions and peppers. And I will stuff them into like biscuit dough and I'll put cheese all over them. And it's, it's so good because I can heat them up and eat them at any time. And <laughs> I could go on about food forever, actually, but I'm not because this image is almost done. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out the information below to get to my fur affinity for the next free sketch raffle. Subscribe and like if you like it. Alright, see you next time.